We've now explained the difference between weather and climate, but what does climate change mean? The definition provided here comes from the American Meteorological Society, who define climate change as a systematic change in climate conditions that is sustained over several decades or longer. Climate change is caused when the climate system is forced or kicked by a natural, for example, changes in the Earth's orbit around the sun, or human, for example, burning fossil fuels factor. We'll come back to this um, definition later on today. Knowledge of the present climate system is critical to predicting and understanding climate change. Today we will start our investigation of the modern climate system. We will start with energy from the sun and the temperature of the earth. Radiation from the sun is a mixture of electromagnetic waves ranging from infrared to ultraviolet. The amount of energy reaching the earth is 1,367 watts per meter squared, which is referred to as the solar constant. This number refers to energy received by the cross section of the earth. To calculate the energy received on the surface of the earth, which is a sphere, we have to divide by 4, which gives about 341 watts per meter squared. Because some of this energy is absorbed by the Earth's surface, the Earth warms and emits its own energy. Temperature is a measure of that warming and is related to the energy received. This relationship is described by Stefan Boltzmann's law. I will briefly introduce Stefan Boltzmann's law today. The most important thing to remember is that the temperature of an object is related to the energy absorbed by that object. On the left is a diagram showing a simple Earth with no atmosphere. The Earth receives 341 watts per meter squared from the Sun, but about 30% is reflected back into space. 30% of 341 watts per meter squared is 102 watts per meter squared. So the Earth absorbs 238 watts per meter squared. The amount of energy absorbed by the Earth must equal the amount of energy emitted. So 238 watts per meter squared are emitted. We can calculate temperature using Stefan Boltzmann's law shown here. Stefan Boltzmann's law says that temperature is related to the fourth root of energy. If we make this calculation, and you can try this yourself, we find the temperature of the Earth should be minus 18 degrees Celsius. Obviously, this is not the case. This is because the Earth has an atmosphere, which traps outgoing energy. We will explore this in much more detail in week five, when we learn about the greenhouse effect. For now, just remember that temperature is related to energy. The average energy received by the Earth is 341 watts per meter squared. However, three factors result in the equator receiving more energy than the poles. These factors include that the Earth is tilted, beam spreading, and beam depletion. Points that receive energy from the Sun directly overhead will receive more energy than other places. The point on Earth where the Sun is directly overhead is called the subsolar point, and it moves seasonally from 23.5 degrees north latitude, which is the Tropic of Cancer, in summer to 23.5 degrees south, or the Tropic of Capricorn, in winter. This is because of the tilt of the Earth and the way the Earth orbits around the Sun. Watch to see how the subsolar point moves through the year by using the animation on this slide. In the Northern Hemisphere, we experience the summer solstice of approximately June 21st. This is when the Northern Hemisphere is pointed towards the sun and the subpolar point is at 23.5 degrees north. At the spring and fall equinoxes, the subpolar point is at the equator. At the winter solstice, the subpolar point is at 23.5 degrees south, and in the northern hemisphere, we're pointed away from the sun. North of 23.5 degrees and south of 23.5 degrees latitude, 
The sun is never directly overhead, and as a result, these parts of the Earth receive less energy. This is largely due to beam spreading and beam depletion. Beam spreading occurs when light hits the surface of the Earth at angles not perpendicular to the surface. When the sun is directly overhead, as shown in the, the left panel, energy is concentrated over a relatively small area. When the sun is at any other angle, as in the panel on the right, the area receiving the energy is larger and the energy is spread out and diluted. This means that more energy is received in equatorial areas than at the poles. The short video on the next slide illustrates these ideas.